everyone. Oh my gosh. Yes, this is Lacey Don Jackson. Ah, the groovy green goddess in her little tiny house on a very rainy day. It's dark and dismal out there although you know behind me is a window and uh, if you are watching uh, Facebook live over in the chat room uh, one two radio chat room then you will see that it looks quite bright out there uh, but um, it's the light colored gray clouds that are brightening up my background so I am wishing all of you a happy day wherever you are. I hope that um, your day is going swell and uh, that uh, uh, that if you have something to, to complain about, vent and be done with it and get it over with and move on. You know, that's a lot of times what we, uh, that's the only thing that we can do sometimes until um, things shift and change. And certainly things always shift and things are always changing. So I just realized that if people are watching me Facebook Live, that I have actually covered up like the, oh, let's see if I can fix it. Cover up the, um, what you guys are saying to me okay let's see um if that helps uh yeah my amethyst uh someone commented uh in the um in the comments that i have this beautiful amethyst behind me and uh yeah that amethyst is uh, been with me through a few moves and um, and has been broke a couple times, but uh, you would never guess it. Do you know that they have um, crazy glue out now in different colors? Um, when I was um, fixing my amethyst uh, a couple years back when it broke, I found that out and I got purple crazy glue and was able to glue my amethyst back together with a uh, purple crazy glue. So um, my amethyst was very happy. Anyway, um, yeah, it's uh, amethyst. I love amethyst. It's just such a clean, uh, clearing energy. And so I, I have it near me um, most of the time or, well, uh, definitely now since, uh, you know, my bed is like just a couple feet away. Um, amethyst is one of those uh, stones that you can sleep with and it won't disturb your sleep. There are some stones that will really uh, disturb your sleep and, uh, um, yeah. For instance, like my crystal ball, and I know I'm I'm getting totally off track, but my crystal ball is funny because um, I can sleep with my crystal ball, but other people cannot sleep in the same room as my crystal ball. It's just too high energy, and uh, they uh, just you know don't don't care to sleep with my crystal ball, which it's probably because my crystal ball just wants me. Anyway, today here on Groovy Green Goddess, we will be talking about, what will we be talking about? We'll be talking about, oh, we'll just touch base on animals. If there is any animals that have been coming up into your life, uh, post them in the chat room and we will talk a little bit about them, what their meaning is, maybe what is, uh, uh, what they are trying to show you, um, in your life right here right now um, I had written on the uh, announcement when I posted on my my Facebook page that I would be talking about the alphabet and that was last night when I posted that but it was funny because I've been hanging around a four-year-old a lot this week she's on spring break and uh, Miss Sally and I have been uh, doing lots of things together. I, I frankly haven't got a lot of work done, you know, and, and that's something that I am uh, definitely um, learning and recognizing that since moving back here to the tiny house that uh, 
Um, my, my dear family lives through the trees, like I may have mentioned before. And um, Miss Ellie has been coming down here, oh, the other morning before I was even awake. There is this like pounding on my door. Gemma, Gemma, let me in, let me in. And she comes down here and uh, she, her hair is just all um, messed up. And she came in and she goes, yeah, Gemma, I crawled out my window. <laughs> so uh, she had crawled out her window to come see me. And I love that. <laughs> but... It is uh, something that is uh, a little bit trying just to get my work done. But what we did this week, um, I have a loft that I had some stuff that uh, stored up there. And I did some more cleaning. And I suggest, I highly suggest that if you are living in a house where you have boxes you have not gone into for a couple years, then go through it and get rid of things. Because you know what happens is that you open yourself up to some fabulous opportunities. So I got all the stuff off of the, the loft and, uh, the, except for the little couch, there's a little, little, uh, pink couch up there with, I think flowers and, um, uh, Miss Ellie uh, took the little broom that I have and uh, swept it and, and we put yoga mats on on the floor of it to um, cushion so when she's, you know, crawling around. Actually, it's for when I'm crawling around on my knees there because I can't stand up. She can stand up up there, but I can't. Um, but um, we fixed it up to where it is her little place. And the other night she said, Gamma, I'm not going home. I'm going to, I'm going to live down here with you. And, um, you know, that would be okay for, for a little bit, but I don't think her parents, uh, you know, they would start missing her and, uh, you know, at midnight she would probably want to go back home, but, um, she, she has no fear. I tell ya. And, and I know I'm just bragging up, uh, my granddaughter, but, um, uh, she has to go through the woods. There's a little trail. And the other night, just so I could get some work done, I turn off my porch light and I moved my car. I mean, I felt guilty about moving my car so she wouldn't see my car there. Uh, because if she sees my car, then guess where she is? She's here with me. And, um, so I moved my car around the other side uh, of the the house, and um, no, that didn't keep her. You know, she comes running down, and I, I looked out the window, and uh, I was riding, and, and looked out the window, and there's this light flashing all over the place, and I could hear, I, I think that uh, the ground underneath us is hollow because I could hear, you know, this hollowness of, you know, somebody running down the trail and, uh, and this light flipping all over the place. And, um, yeah, it was pretty funny. It was her and she's like, Gamma, you moved your car. <laughs> um, and with her climbing out the window, you know, uh, her parents are telling her to stay because grandma's got to work. Uh, so I'm trying to figure that piece out. Um, now that she has her own space up in the loft, um, she has done very well at uh, playing with her Barbies. And, uh, oh, that reminds me. I was going to tell you a story about the Barbies. It's just kind of weird or weird for me anyway. But, um yeah, so she's been really good about playing up there and allowing me to work down here. But um, I, I was going to, I used to have a PJ Barbie. And um, my, when I, I had uh, bought some Barbies and Barbie clothes from a garage sale, oh, when I was living down at the ocean for Ellie to, when she came down to visit, that she could play with them. Well, uh, she's been playing with them here, and my mom brought down some Barbies and Barbie clothes that used to be my sister's and uh, and mine. And my sister was really into Barbie at that time, and, you know, I think I've always been a rebel because I didn't like Barbie, but I liked PJ. And um, 
I think I like PJ because she had really thick, you know, eye, um, eye color on her eyelashes. And, um, oh, I was going to get her, too, before we started. But anyway, um, I started looking at PJ. And what was so weird is that apparently PJ had broke her left leg at one time. And it was so broke that it probably couldn't pop back into the socket. And so uh, my mom being a nurse, uh, probably, um, you know, we had the cast stuff. So she put a cast on PJ's leg. And what struck me as odd was that was years before I had my motorcycle accident where I had a cast on my same leg, left leg, for over two years of um, after, you know, nine, uh, ten surgeries later, um, you know, my, my left leg is reconstructed. But um, I just thought that, that was kind of odd, you know, that just different things that we do in our life... Um, can point to something that uh, is going to happen later on in life. So it's really important for us to be, just pay attention to what's going on around us. And, and certainly me being a child at the time, and I didn't think anything about, you know, PJ's broken leg, although it was, you know, she had a, a cast on her leg and I could still dress her and put clothes on her. So yeah, it was just kind of odd that it was the same leg and um, it was a cast on her leg and I had a cast on my leg. Anyway, um, I'm going to go uh, jump into the chat room, but first I am going to tell you a joke because I, like I said, the last time I was on uh, that I've been um, enjoying these uh, jokes and they're so corny. They are, but here's the joke of the day. All right. What is a polygon? What is a polygon? A dead parrot. <laughs> I know. Really, really dumb. <laughs> but, you know, it cracks me up. And if you're having a hard time um, finding something that cracks you up, tell yourself a corny joke or look on the Internet. You know, there's lots of places out there that you can get a corny joke that'll make you just like, go, oh, that's stupid or, you know, uh, bring a smile to your face. Um uh, here's another one, and then we'll move on, and I'll visit the chat room. So, um, what is a turkey's favorite dessert? Peach gobbler. Gobble, 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 gobble. I hope everyone had a great Easter weekend. Uh, April Fool's fell on uh, the Sunday, Easter and, uh, you know, I like April Fool's. And and my dad's birthday was um, uh, the Monday after April Fool's. And Ellie's mom's birthday was on the Sunday on April Fool's. So we celebrated and um, it was a lot of fun. A lot of fun. Oh, and I've got to tell you what the fairies did the other day. So, ah, this is so much fun. So because uh, all the rabbits around here were getting ready for Easter and to hide the eggs and everything. Um, so the other night, I, uh, because it was the full moon on Saturday night, I walked up to Ellie's house through the woods and I um, asked if she could come outside so we could observe the full moon and and just um you know admire it and and I've done that with her ever since she was a baby so uh we went up there and and so she was gonna come back down to the tiny house with me and we started walking down the the trail and lo and behold you know what the fairies did there were eggs along the path and, and in some of the, like the trees and the moss that were lit up. And Ellie, I, I said, oh my gosh, the fairies, they must have just came. I just walked up this path and there was no eggs on this path. And so they must have did this when 
when I was up at your house. And she kept on, you know, running egg to egg. And she, um, I just happened to have a bag to put them in. I mean, go figure. But um, so she's putting the the eggs in, in the bag. And as she's doing it, she's like um, putting her arms up. And she's like, thank you, fairies. Thank you, fairies. And it was just so much fun. So I think that instead of hiding Easter eggs on Sunday, I'll leave that to her parents. And then she can uh, come down to the tiny house, uh, go out into the woods, and we'll look for uh, Easter eggs that are lit up with uh, little candles and uh, find the eggs that the fairies hid uh, during the, um, the night. So anyway... Let's go into the chat room. <laughs> I swear that I uh, sometimes um, just get so sidetracked. But, you know, I, I've i always been one that I will say something. And then after I say it, I'm like, oh, damn, I shouldn't have said that. But, um, yeah. Anyway. <laughs> um. Let's go in and, um, oh, I, hey, I like that, uh, rocker Tara. Hi everyone. So does anyone have any animals that they have been, um, noticing, uh, any animal totems they've been noticing lately? So, uh, you know, the, the, the alphabet thing that I was uh, going to mention and got sidetracked, but we've been singing the alphabet song a lot this week. So I know it very well. So, ah, uh, yeah, Christina, uh, who is in the uh, chat room, has a leprechaun who pranks their house and tries to steal their gold. Ah, uh, yep. Those leprechauns are kind of tricky. I have a um a little cane that I've been carrying around with me. Oh gosh, for years and years and years. That is a leprechaun cane. It's outside right now, but um it definitely is a leprechaun cane that um I found in the woods, oh, probably over 20 20 25 years ago and um one of these days, I just know that the leprechaun's going to come back and claim his cane. But in the meantime, um, I will keep it and um, uh, take very good care of it uh, for for the um, for the leprechaun. Mm. So I'm going to do a general reading here. And I am also going to uh, touch a little bit on abundance and one of the reasons I'm going to do that is I've had a couple clients this week as well as teaching the class on abundance I taught a class a couple nights ago um on abundance here in town how to manifest our abundance but it's a good reminder to to um Remember that abundance isn't necessarily uh, financial. Certainly that helps, especially in this uh, day and age where, um, you know, I'm seeing a lot of homeless people in my, my uh, own city. And I'm sure that uh, if you uh, go uh, into your town, that there are more homeless people than ever before. Um, so it's... Um, you know, important to get back into giving to our communities. If you want to do something, want to do something to help a be, being of service, then part of being uh, abundant is to be of service. So... Are there blankets that you're not using? Hats and gloves. You know, when I was going through my things, um, throughout the years, I've I've collected all these hats and gloves, and and I only need one one hat and one glove. 
I mean, not one. <laughs> I need two gloves. But you know what I mean. I need one pair. And so I collected the hats and the blankets and the gloves. And, you know, some of these blankets were like some of my favorite blankets. But I had to make a choice, especially since I was, um, uh, you know, made the decision to... Um, condensed my space very much so uh and I didn't want to have storage um although I do have a little bit of storage but I won't by the end of uh this year because I will have everything condensed in in my tiny house um but it's important that if we're not using something and I get it, especially with us girls, that we like to have choices. You know, I have a lot of vintage clothing that I I just, um, I haven't been able to get rid of. Although, uh, every couple of weeks I go through my closet and I do take out a piece and I get rid of it because I know that someone else will benefit from wearing it. Um, but it's important to give away things that we have an abundance of. And when we do that, we're giving of service, we're giving to those that are maybe less um, fortunate at, at this moment and that they could really use some of our things that we love. And that um, because we love them, we have instilled those items with that energy of love. And then that energy is going to touch the people that are not having um, that great of time or more challenges, okay? And that's that's a way that uh, we can give our light out into the world. And by doing that, and, uh, and uh, you know, doing it out of the goodness of your heart, but by uh, giving giving things that uh, that no longer serve you or that are just sitting there collecting dust to uh, people that could really utilize them uh, brings abundance, brings abundance to us. And, you know, we're all abundant. It's a matter of just recognizing the little things that bring abundance into our lives. So, um, you know, giving, giving what we no longer um, need or want or that we don't have room for um, clears up a lot of that stagnant energy. If it's sitting around... You know, what I would suggest, too, is, um, <laughs> and I'm very inspired to do this lately, but um, going through my clothes more and more. And if I'm not wearing something or if something just feels a little off when I wear it or it's like really cute, but then when I wear it, it's like, uh, you know, um, gift it to someone that you know it would look smashing on, you know, and, and make their day. Be generous. When we are generous, it helps the universe go, wow, okay, let's let's give her or him more of that. Okay? So, um, rabbits. Oh, rabbits. We've been seeing rabbits everywhere. And I'm not sure if it's because it's springtime and they're multiplying and they're they're out, uh, or it's because of uh Easter and they were really busy and, and you know, just wrapping up Easter time and, and um I think it's a little of both. L last night, um, at dusk, uh Ellie and I counted four rabbits right here around the tiny house, just um hanging out. So rabbits are very much um, making their appearance uh, right now. Rabbits, you know, it's interesting because rabbits can mean fertility because they multiply like, I don't know, they multiply like rabbits do. And uh, so, you know, bringing things into our life, you know, that fertility of uh, getting uh, multiplying. We could use rabbit as multiplying our abundance, multiplying the good. The, the, uh, 
I don't want to say downside of rabbit, but the, the, um, the reverse side of rabbit indicates fear. So, um, if, if you are wanting to step into something that is, um, unknown to you, uh, especially like a, a business endeavor or make the jump into another, um, a move or, um, another uh, place of business then <clears throat> and you're scared and you haven't um, necessarily done anything taken action yet rabbit will come up a lot in those times to indicate you know you're you're uh, could be a little afraid of this uh, so rabbits indicate fear and it's it's a uh, really um, a good thing to ask ourselves when rabbit enters our space um, ask ourselves what are we afraid of what are we um, fearful of maybe it's that change that you've been wanting to make you know and uh, rabbit showing up uh, will uh, prompt you to ask those questions of what are you afraid of and a lot of times the answers that just come right smack quickly when you ask that, don't second guess it. That's what we do when we're listening to our intuition many times is we second guess what comes up because a lot of times it doesn't make sense. And so not second guessing that, um, that information that comes up after you ask, what am I afraid of? And just that acknowledgement, just that awareness will help you move forward into this new endeavor, okay? And and again, rabbit is about fertility. Rabbit is about multiplying. So utilizing that rabbit energy to uh, multiply um, your abundance. Be of service. That is, you know, one of the, the best ways to bring in abundance okay um a couple people this week have um said well you know um abundance i i don't even get what that means because you know they <clears throat> they both named off several different challenges that they've been going through and um challenges that Certainly, someone observing the challenges could observe it as they're just not willing to step out of their comfort zone and that the universe is continually over and over again telling them, prompting them, giving them, you know, a little kick to change their circumstances, okay? Okay. And it would actually be relatively uh, easy. Well, yeah, easier said than done. I get it. But there is going to be that uh, fear that comes up with anything that we want to shift and change, especially if we want to bring more abundance, whatever that is, to us. But I... I definitely saw in this class, especially with one of them, and, and everyone else saw it too, that she was just in resistance. She knew what she needed to do, and she'd been sitting on making this move um, for a couple years. And she kept talking about it and kept wanting to make this move, but she, and she even, and, and I've known her for quite some time, but she'd even made a plan like a couple years ago to make this move. And, and it was it is a physical move and to move um, back to some place that she had left um, several years ago. But she's finding that um, a lot of her support system is back where she um, moved from several years ago. Um, but because of her job uh, here... Um, she is a little apprehensive about, you know, making that move. Now, um, I have seen her um, 
even get a, a job opportunity in this new location. And things were, you know, falling into, yeah, they were falling into place for her. But the thing that she is, um, and this is when the rabbit comes up, uh, fearful of, is that change and going, uh, you know, even though she's going back to something, um, there's a couple points I want to make here. So even though she's going back to something, you know, have you ever left something and then years later you go back and, and you have changed so much or you have established your own boundaries, you have, you know, you're able to see things that were driving you nuts uh, before that kind of drove you to move anyway. You come back and you look at things and you see things in such a different manner. You know, that, that has happened to me uh, just, you know, a couple years ago when I decided to move down to the ocean to write, to, to you know, just kind of... Uh, get away from, you know, what I was uh, doing here because of just my patience and uh, just, you know, many, many factors. But I come back a couple years later um, and I see where I'm a lot more patient and um, I'm going to just soak up my parents even though they drive me nuts a lot of times, but I'm going to soak it up because um, I I won't have them forever. And a couple years ago, it was like, oh, I've got to move away from this. Why am I here at my parents? You know, why am I living on the same land as them? But um, I look at things in a totally different manner. So, you know, it's really important to... Um, let go of that, oh, things are going to be the same because everything is always changing. Everything is always changing. So there's that aspect that I see with her that is uh, taking place is that, oh, things are going to just be the same, but she's not the same. Okay. And she's able to um, look at it in a, a different, a different form. Something else is that there is only one thing, basically, it's not even really her job because she could get a job in the same industry where she is and she's already, I mean, she could, it's just a matter of just letting them know, but it's a relationship and it's a relationship because she does not want to be alone. And, you know, that is very common you know, we don't want to be alone. We don't want to be, we're, us uh, spiritual beings living this human experience, we're very social, very social. And it's really important to, um, you know, get that, um, that companionship. But the companionship that, uh, that she has uh, chosen, because she could leave at any time, is with someone that really doesn't treat her very good at all. As a matter of fact, takes advantage of her. And she knows that. You know, through the years of working with her, she definitely knows what she needs to do. Um, you know, at the same time, when we do know what we need to do to bring in more abundance, more opportunity for us, then... Uh, it's, it's important that uh, we don't beat ourselves up and that we continue to pat ourselves on the back for, okay, you know what? I'm aware of this. You know, sometimes being aware of something, um, all of a sudden we'll wake up and we will make that change. We will be willing to jump over the cliff and know that the net is going to appear. So um, that is uh, one uh, thing that we can do to uh, bring in abundance okay that looks like my internet may be running funny it seems like so i'm not sure um i hope that uh, i'm still here but yeah looks like i am all right so uh butterflies mm. butterflies are transformation i love butterflies uh, butterflies are all about the phases that we go through as a human, as a being. You know, it's, it's um, you know, the different phases. You know, we are that cocoon and, and um, 
then we, you know, blossom and then we turn into something beautiful and we, you know, fly off and, and we're ready. We have the confidence. So uh, seeing butterflies is a reminder that uh, you are birthing yourself into something beautiful, more beautiful beautifuler than than ever and that some of the uh the goals that you have is um some of those goals are going to manifest and you're going to see some more opportunity okay so um put yourself as the butterfly okay go through the different stages of what a butterfly goes through it's a quite intense uh, process to to do but uh, it is a really good way of bringing that empowerment within you so start as a little caterpillar you know and um, how do you feel as this caterpillar and going into the cocoon and then flying with your wings butterflies also with uh, many people uh, indicate deceased loved ones are around as well. So, um, you know, if you're seeing, mm, if you are seeing a, a butterfly following you around, uh, landing on your nose, uh, that probably is a deceased loved one saying, you know, hello to you and, and stuff. So, ha! Huh, I haven't lost my voice yet. It is getting a little scratchy, so uh, hmm. I'll just refuse to talk after the rest of the day. Anyway, um, so in the chat room, uh, Tara, I received a scholarship for my next dance class. Can I afford to keep dancing now? Can I afford to keep dancing? Feeling so abundant, the manifestation is happening. Woohoo! You know. It uh, is very much that you are in rhythm of uh, what your passion is and uh, continue that and enjoy the moment. You know, so many times, um, you know, when we are chasing that, whatever it is, our passion and we want to, you know, manifest things like um, a scholarship for a class or uh, a teacher to show up and um you know teach you things that you would like to learn um just by putting that out there in the universe and at the same time uh remaining positive about it remaining positive about the abundance and visualizing it visualizing it to happen visualizing it already happening that is one of the biggest ways that we can all of a sudden be in our manifestation is that we have visualized us doing it. I'm sure that Tara, you know, with this scholarship prior to receiving it, she danced and she was dancing and she felt her, uh, you know, she didn't know how she was going to be able to do this, uh, this program. But she danced and, you know, dancing is one of the best ways that we can um, bring our bodies into this higher vibration that when we are dancing, we are visualizing what it is that we would love to manifest in our lives. And by doing that, our vibration is on high. We're letting the universe know what we are capable of and what we um, are manifesting. And then the universe provides. The universe hands it over. Okay. Um, I notice that uh, in my classes and my retreats that when the dance time comes that many times um, people are very stiff. And I've been there. I've been there. Um, when I was first getting into knowing my authentic self, or I didn't even know what the hell authentic self was, um, and I was invited to dance. And not just, you know, 
I've always liked dancing. I've always loved going out, seeing live bands and, and dancing and, and, um, uh, you know, so that was a little bit different, but it was also different in a couple different ways is that when I was younger and doing that, I was drinking. So I got a buzz and you know, I was dancing and, um, now nowadays or, um, you know, when, when I, when I stopped drinking and, uh, to dance or to, you know, dance without a buzz, I was like, oh my gosh. You know, do I have to do this? Everybody's going to be looking and, ah, you know, I don't know if I can do that. But I would invite you that in the comfort of your own home, if you are one of those that when, when I mentioned the word dance, that uh, you step out of your comfort zone, shut the curtains, even go into the bathroom if you have family members that you're like, ah, gosh, I'm not going to dance in front of them that uh, you go and you just start moving your body and moving your body just you know move it fluidly or stiltedly you know um however you know it comes to you by doing that you just release what no longer serves you in your body, you release that negativity, you release so much so you can bring in that abundance, so you can bring in that higher vibration. Thank you, Tara, for mentioning about dancing because dancing is definitely one of those exercises that we can do everywhere. Uh, you know what I love to do is um, dance against the rhythm. And, uh, it, you know, it, it's like goofy and, and stuff. Something that I saw, I don't know if it was this morning or last night about dancing on Facebook is, you know, be like a child. A child doesn't need music to dance, you know. And, and I noticed that with Ellie. Miss Ellie will, like, start, like, and she, there's no music around. She's just, like, in her body. So it's... um always a um a really good thing it's good therapy for us to get out of our comfort zone and dance and uh and even sing oh my gosh sing you know i am taking voice lessons um i have in the past but i am taking voice lessons from uh someone every other week and uh you know i am not a singer and I don't ever, you know, that's not really on my goal. But I'm doing it because someone, a teacher, way back in middle school told me that I could not sing. And, um, you know, that screwed me up for many years. Thank you, teacher. Um, that stuck with me. So, you know, one of the things that I want to do is uh, get more confident. And, and I, I've had to work at that through the years, especially with um, my voice, because I was told that I was not a good singer. Well, you don't tell a little kid that. You, you encourage them or, you know, mm, yeah, fun. Anyway, it, it's funny what we remember as children. Ah, <sighs> okay. I'm going to do a reading. I think I said that I, did I do a reading yet today? No, I don't think so. I don't remember. Uh, but I started shuffling the cards. All right. So, hmm. my big deck. <laughs> so I am going to pick a couple cards. And as always, if you are listening right here on 12radio.com, and uh, this is a uh, demand performance, <laughs> that um, this reading is for you as well. So here goes. Okay. Oh, I was just talking about, well, dance, but okay. So, the card that came up is yoga. Yoga came up. 
Now, personally, I think this card is really for me because for the last couple days, I've been thinking about, um, uh, I, I do yoga, but I've been getting the, the, uh, to go and do more yoga. I am in a yoga teacher training so I can, um, uh, be more confident about teaching yoga to others and and my focus is to go and teach this program to kids and i already have this program uh in uh i i've done it before and i'm getting back into doing that but yoga it, it isn't just for me but many times when i'm doing readings that the cards will show up they apply to me as well as you uh listeners and uh, anyone who is watching me so yoga an invitation for you to stretch your body for you to do yoga for you to get more active spring is sprung it's time to get more active even if you are in states where there's so much snow and it's still snowing uh, storms coming in there is a storm coming in here in our area over the next couple days um, and uh, I was reading um, in a report this morning that uh, we don't usually get storms of this caliber up the coast of the Pacific Northwest coast so um, it is a little um, weird for that to happen they're saying but um, while maybe your lights go out <laughs> um stretch do some yoga it will also warm you up if you're cold you know i am affirming our lights do not go out i am headed down to the coast this weekend to see clients and i don't want to be working in the candlelight although that can be fun i've done it before the next card is be strong now this is a goddess card that's coming up segment and um, the lions powerful bring that uh, courageous lion energy you know lions uh, you know that Wizard of Oz the lion there you know he had all he needed was some courage you know lions bring courage to us so if there is something that you have wanted to do um invoke that lion energy ask the universe and it will be done and it uh will look probably different than the way that you're thinking it will um i have some affirmations that I want to read a couple affirmations. I've read some of these affirmations to you before in regards to abundance. But I would invite you this week to uh, take some of these affirmations, write them down on an index card, a post-it note, post it to your mirror when you're getting ready in the morning, repeat it um, when you're driving. Mm. When you're driving, you, um, you recite it, okay? These are really good energetic busters to just catapult your energy up in that level of energy that is needed to bring what it is you want to manifest into your life so um the first affirmation and this can also apply to those of us um that sometimes have low self-esteem okay i am a radiant magnetic being I am a radiant magnetic being. So taking that and, and saying it over and over again, it puts you into that higher vibration. And when we remain in that higher vibration of love, joy, goofiness, <laughs> taking things light and not serious, um, you know, there's a time for being serious, but taking it in just, you know, and, and the, the next one, because we are all abundant. 
And I will probably repeat this so many times through the years because it is something that is very important that we remember that we are all abundant. And usually some of the reasons why we are not abundant in our life is because of social conditioning or what we have learned to believe in ourselves or in um, the way things are. You know, we can get out of a situation. We may not know how we're going to get out of a situation or to bring in that money or, you know, the change that is needed. <clears throat> but it can be manifested um, as long as we become more aware of how we are acting out there in the world. You know, if we're always pissed off and we're, we're like, you know, talking about others or we are mad because things aren't coming to us or we hate our job as we're driving to it. If we continue to think that way, then we're bringing our, our vibration down here. Whereas the only way that we can, you know, bring this abundance is when we are in a higher vibration. And we definitely, uh, it's a cleaner abundance. You know, I, I have known some pretty wicked people that, that are pretty abundant uh, doing the, yeah, I won't go there. But, you know, they're definitely dancing around in a lower vibration. So, um it is, I, I can imagine, if their vibration was a little higher, what they could manifest. So if you struggle with like your self-esteem or your confidence or, um, you know, you want to make more money, uh, yeah, sometimes it doesn't happen overnight. But you can certainly change the way that you look at the world and um, look at yourself especially you know when we look at the world or when you know it's it's we start here we start here in order to make the change the facilitate the change out there and um, that is uh, something that uh, you know we forget sometimes so it's important to remember that uh, we are wrapping up already. I can't believe how fast this goes. Um, I could probably continue to talk, although, ah, I am, um, I am almost out of time. And the phone rings saying, okay, it's, and I don't give anybody that number. And um, people call, but it's the wrong number. So I appreciate you all tuning in. Uh, this week, taking time out of your busy schedules to um, uh, to watch me or to listen to me over at uh, one two listen. I mean one two radio dot com. Now over at one two listen. Now I gotta get this in. We are having a um, a flash of love sale. So a flash of love sale. You say what is that? Well, that is. A flash of love. It's like a couple hour sale with uh, fabulous prices over at 12listen.com. It starts at 3 p.m. Pacific Standard Time today and it lasts only until 5 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. So if you have a question, uh, something you want one of us advisors to look at for you, we are there and. Um, flash of love we're giving you a flash of love today uh next week is barbara and wheel and deal uh next up is the psychic sisters and uh we have programming tonight too if you can't listen to the programming go over to one two radio we always have our shows archived you can listen to them on demand so um, have a fabulous week and I'll see you in a couple weeks. Peace.